NCF has uh, been an idea that has uh, evolved since the day it was born. To me, it's nothing more than a bunch of individuals who came together, who shared a common purpose, who in some way or the other wanted to contribute to conservation. A lot of the species that we were seeing were in decline. Habitats were getting degraded or disappearing. How do we deal with some of these things? It's not about buildings, infrastructure, labs, and things like that. Those things are required, but NCF is not about them. NCF is about its individuals. We had our own small areas of interest, species that we were really passionate about, or places that we really wanted to go and work in. There's no, there's not really a present which is static. I think we've continued to remain quite dynamic. And that modest attempt to journey together, to use science, to use knowledge, is what has driven NCF. NCF is the whole that is uh, bigger than the sum of some of its parts. Ever since we've uh, started our association with NCF, I've been incredibly impressed at the dynamism, the energy of these people. Whether it's setting up an uh, interpretation center in Pake Tiger Reserve way off in Arunachal Pradesh, or dealing with leopard and elephant-human conflict in Valpare here in South India, or the coral reefs of the Andamans in Lakshadweep. They are everywhere and they're doing incredible work. Sixteen years ago, we set up a research base in the Andaman Islands, ANAT, and we dreamed of having links with someone like Rohan Arthur of NCF. And sure enough, he came on board and uh, started India's first and only long-term coral reef study project. The oceans and coasts of India are among its most used uh, systems, yet we know vanishingly little about how they work, what makes them tick. From what we've found out thus far, is that the way local communities are using uh, systems are increasingly moving from small artisanal fishing to almost industrial scale harvesting of the seas. And this is having a dramatic impact on ecosystems within the lifespan of our program itself. We've seen these ecosystems decline. So our efforts over the last two decades really have been in this direction, to get the basic information that we require. And what we are trying to do uh, is to now feed back that information to the people that matter, to coastal communities, to uh, managers of these systems, and to policymakers, and hopefully the information that we're getting now is going to feed back into conservation action in the future. I've been fortunate to uh, meet a cross-section of people from the NCF. I've been absolutely impressed by the fact that all of them are very, very focused on what they're doing and completely dedicated to the cause. We were doing some research on the effect of fragmentation. So when we came to the Anamalais, we found that most of the forests were in small patches. Uh, but what we were worried is that the degradation seemed to continue and they had not been recognized as patches that need to be preserved because most of them were on private land. Restoration is not a kind of intervention where you see results in the short term. If I plant a sapling before I can see it as a tree, it will probably take me 10 to 20 years. So not just commitment from my side or from, from my team, but also from the land owners who we are working with. And then, of course, I slowly started getting involved with helping you, I mean, supporting them in a very, very small way. Certainly is uh, something that needed to be done because of the kind of degradation that has happened over the years and something that they've been successful at doing. I think we have lessons that we have learnt which can be replicated and taken up by other conservation organizations or private companies which are interested in protecting forest patches. What is also very impressive is uh, uh, they also do very good science, not just uh, shouting from the mountaintop, but a lot of it, uh, all of it is based on very, very good science.
we'd been working in this area in Pakke Tiger Reserve for close to eight nine years. From around 2003, we'd been monitoring nests inside the park. There was a lot of deforestation, so we thought that why not try to. Uh, do something to protect the nests outside. The village council, which is made up of the local uh, village headmen, the gamburas, so we thought, why not partner with them to try to initiate something to protect the nests outside? So we thought it's best to try and get citizens involved, Indian citizens, who can adopt a nest for five thousand rupees and uh, you know feel a part of this. The village council uh, selected some youth. They get paid a monthly salary. During the breeding season of the hornbills, the biggest thing is the sense of ownership that many of these people feel to the program, which has happened over the last two years. People have generally understood the importance of conserving the hornbills, and one of them, in fact, I'll just tell you a short story about him. He uh, has this great hornbill nest which he's now protecting for the last four years. And in 2005, he told me the story of how he was going to cut it down through the nest adoption program. He says, "I'm apna pet pal rahe." What he means is that you know his livelihood is now from these hornbills. That is quite heartwarming to see that you know connection that they have made and how they have made hornbills a part of their lives. If you look at the Himalayan high altitudes, I think it's uh, they're very unique. We have snow leopards over two million square kilometers in Central Asia, and maybe close to two hundred thousand square kilometers in India. So it's a large landscape. What that means is that the conservation efforts must be spread out over this large landscape. So you cannot just focus on a protected area. Snow leopards, for instance, kill livestock, which is one of the most important foundations of local economies. And you know, understandably, people cannot tolerate such damage, and snow leopards get killed in retaliation. You know, local communities are our most important partners, so we must conserve uh, these species and these ecosystems on people's land. We've had communities and villages setting aside parts of their grazing land uh, for wildlife conservation. You know, we've had uh, successful community-based uh, livestock insurance programs comes to their assistance when they lose. Livestock to snow leopards and wolves, retaliatory killing of carnivores like snow leopards and wolves, as well as hunting, completely stopped uh, by local communities, as well as they have prevented outsiders from, uh, you know, coming to hunt. In the future, I can visualize uh, us intensifying the efforts and expanding the efforts that we have already been making. But I can also see a much greater engagement, especially with the industry, to see how we can. Make the economic uh, development and infrastructural projects less damaging ecologically. To complement the scientific research that NCF does in wildlife and conservation, it's important to engage the public on issues of nature and wildlife, and we do this uh, in a variety of ways. We produce uh, material in different forms for different kinds of audiences, and in addition, we run what's called citizen science projects, where we uh, invite members of the public to collaborate with us in uh, generating information about the natural world, information that's useful for. To monitor what's happening and uh, potentially for conservation as well. Our aim in doing this work is uh, to get people engaged with nature, and we believe strongly that once people start embark upon this sort of engagement, they become passionate voices for nature, for wildlife, and for conservation. 
You see, I work in I work in many countries. I work in large parts of Central Asia, and the biggest challenge that I, I encounter is the human resource. I, the biggest uh, bottleneck is having the people who can actually go out and try and you know effect conservation. But I believe that in India we're very privileged, and especially at NCF we are very privileged because we've really been fortunate to have some really outstanding people. And even the people, the younger people who have joined us, many of them have been um, really good and, you know, are really growing into, um, into very effective conservationists. While on the one hand, there is almost no similarity between a coral reef and a tropical rainforest. There are convergent principles that bind these ecosystems together. And in that respect, it brings us back to everything that NCF does. Uh, one of our strengths is really bringing together these, sh these shared learnings from different ecosystems. Over the years, we have spent in different ecosystems, in different cultures, and different societies, economies, we've realized that science is essential, but science is not enough. We've been enriched by that learning, and we do hope that our work too has been enriched by that. I think NCF's philosophy is based on a simple realization that uh, conservation problems are not only complex but unique. The underlying threats are constantly changing. The opportunities are constantly changing. We really believe that it's not just the end, it's not just the um, conservation of biodiversity that we want to achieve, but for us, how we achieve it is extremely important and the way to achieve it, we believe, should be uh, equitable and just. <laughs>